In this video, I'm gonna show you how to uh, set up a Spring MVC project uh, from scratch using uh, Java config, which is uh, we're gonna using XML. We are gonna using uh, Java classes for our config configuration. And uh, here, I'm gonna doing something uh, different. I'm gonna create from the scratch uh, from uh, sorry from using the archetype provided by the Maven. So the one we are going to choose is a Maven archetype web app. So when you, when you choose this one, you're going to download some files and uh, instead of uh, start from scratch. Okay. Next, group ID. Artifact ID, we're going to use Spring MVC Java config version. We're using Java classes to do our configuration. If you want to change the bundle, you can change. Okay, I just using the default one. And this is the location. If you want to change, you can change. And now we have to wait a little bit because it's gonna go online, to download the archetype, and which is a template. Okay, so in Opal, don't ask me again. And uh, this is the files. It downloaded. Let's take a look at the POM first. Okay, if you have a URL for your project, you can change it. I'm gonna change this one to be 1.8. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, building plugins how to build your project, like how to create the WAR files and uh, how to clean all the things. Okay, and uh, here, I don't have, you need to use JUnit. I'm gonna add a dependency, which is our Spring, you know, Spring Web MVC. Okay, that's it for this one. And the next one we are gonna do is uh, here. First thing is, I don't need uh, to have this index.js, but it's gonna make you feel confused. And uh, we don't use any XMLs inside this project. We're gonna delete this one, okay? And next one, uh, we have to write our Java classes, right? And in order to write a Java classes, you have to have a Java folder. This is the structure of the Maven. And you make it, you can mark it. You can go here, mark it as a source root, okay? It should be like this way, then you can go and the market as a source root. And next step is I'm gonna create a folder or package. Okay, I'm gonna put all my configuration files here and another package I'm gonna create now is called uh, and all my controller class I'm gonna put it here. So the first step, I'm gonna configure for our dispatcher servlet, right? Dispatcher servlet init, okay? Don't ask. And in this one, you have to extend abstract annotation config dispatcher initializer. This is a class you have to extend. And once you extend here, then it's gonna have three methods you have to provide implementation okay three method and the first one you are not needed to use it for this demo because in this class in this method you have to return a class uh, which will configure for the you can configure for the database connection of those things so we're gonna return now for now and we're gonna have to do for this one, we'll come back, okay? And uh, for this one, do you remember in the web.xml, you have a UR pattern, and in that place, you add a slash, right? And uh, this is a method, you do the same thing, which means for all my request comes, it will go to our dispatcher servlet. Next step, you have to create another class for Spring to initialize all your controllers and also for the view resolver. So we have to create another class called web. Uh, how about web application context config, okay? 
class. In this class, um, in Spring 5, you can use implements the Web MVC configurer. Okay, and if in Spring 4, you can use an extends Web MVC configurer adapter. The difference between them is because of a change in Java 8. In Java 8, in an uh, interface, you can also have a default implementation for the interfaces, right? Interfaces methods. But uh, before Java 8, you cannot. Uh, all the methods in interface has to be abstract. Okay, and uh, since the change in Spring 5, it adds default met implementation of the methods in the interface, so you don't need to have that uh, adapter. And uh, that adapter class is actually uh, deprecated now. So the first annotation we add is called the configuration. When you add a configuration annotation on this class, um, then inside this class, you can declare beans. Next one, we have to enable Web MVC. It will make sure some specific MVC configurations works, like uh, it will make sure your request mapping, request prompt, path variable works. And next one, we add a component scan, which is a tail spring. Where to tail spring? Where are your component annotated? Um, classes like uh, if you have a class annotated with a component, annotated with a controller service uh, repository, and uh, when you give the package here, the Spring will initialize those beans for you. So we can give uh, xng dot region, and it also scan the uh, the sub packages for you. Okay. Next one we are gonna put in this class is our view resolver. We are gonna define a bin and we are gonna have a public, public internal resource view resolver. Get internal resource view resolver. Okay. And when you add a configuration, you can declare the bins. And again here I am gonna using View resolver equals new internal resource view resolver. And in the view resolver, you can set the prefix. OK, let's set the prefix first, sorry. View resolver dot set prefix web inf. I put our uh, GSP files under the web inf. And you can set a view resolver for set suffix, okay, dot gsp. And then I return view resolver, okay. Uh, now the next step is, this is our configuration for our Spring MVC, right? We have to mention this in our dispatch servlet. Where to put? You put it here. Okay, dot class okay so our configuration is done for the project and now you can start to write the code for your business logic or for your feature so now I'm gonna create a class called uh, welcome controller how about that and here I'm gonna create a controller okay and next step I'm gonna create public string Welcome. Return. Since of the view resolver, you no longer need to give the full path to that GSP page. You can directly give the GSP pages file name. Request mapping. I'm gonna go. Yes, I'm gonna have a slash here, which is when a application starts, you should pull welcome.gsp under the web inf and under the GSP folder. See here? Under the web in GSP folder, you need to have a welcome.gsp file. Yeah, so not a cut. New directory, uh, GSP, right? GSP, and we have a welcome GSP file. Oh, so welcome, welcome GSP files. And I'm going to change this one to welcome. And H1 and welcome to my channel. Perfect. 
Now let's run and see if everything works. Okay, add the configuration. Go here, Tomcat, local, and deploy. We're gonna choose the artifact. Okay, go back, nothing, apply, okay. And the next step is just to click this one to run. Okay, we got the Maven will start building your project. Okay, so here we have error. The problem is here, when you see cannot access this uh, exception, which means uh, you're missing some dependency. Unfortunately, if we're using Java config, you have to add, add servlet java x servlet is, no, 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 sorry, not this one, java x dot servlet API. Java X, this one, servlet API, and the servlet, and the four. And you can make the scope to be provided because uh, this servlet is actually is inside the, this Java is, is inside Tomcat, but uh, you have to provide it to, to pass the compiler. Okay, so we make it provided when the uh, Maven wrap your application as a WAR file, it won't put these uh, jar files into your WAR file. So we're just using a Tomcat one. Run one more time. Uh, it seems works. Okay. Okay, connect your server, deploy successfully, and uh, on the page you will show, okay, I cannot switch to the, let me switch to the ID, let me switch to our Chrome, you will see, okay, now you will see, when I enter access, you will see what I typed, okay. Thank you and uh, see you in my next video.